In general, as you can see already in the picture over there, what Oliver and me want to show you is how Volkswagen is using augmented real navigation in the factory and what can be the benefits for uh, an OEM like Volkswagen, for instance. Um, to get started, maybe Oliver, you start with a short <laughs> introduction from your side. Uh, hello, my name is Oliver. I'm from Volkswagen, from the brand VW. I'm working in the production planning department over there and looking for IT innovations. Yeah. And I'm Clemens, I'm founder of Insider Navigation. Very briefly, because I guess uh, most of you know Volkswagen, but maybe not the Insider. Uh, we are a startup founded in 2014 um, and focused on the product of augmented reality indoor navigation, positioning and augmenting of buildings. So that's basically what we are doing. Um, but I guess what we want to show you is what we can do with our technology is basically we can do real-time navigation with augmented reality. We can show the right 2D content on the right spot and we can show any kind of 3D content on the right spot. So that's basically what we can do and above of this is um, where we are then building the use cases. Um, what we do in general is we have to set up a building, which means we have a process how to make a building, a factory recognizable. We have a backend that um, Oliver and his team then can manage all the routes and the navigation and connect external data streams or a JSON REST API. And of course, then we have um, the SDKs. Normally, we always just saw that Apple and Android is covering it all, but we then have seen that Windows is also an important part and Linux since there are already devices in place which are using Windows, for instance, in the factory. Um, that's then, for instance, how the backend looks like. Um, there's an administration tool, so you really can also go into the building, place information, connect it with the right information into um, the factory, for instance. And so everywhere where you are in the factory, you can see navigation, you can update um, the routes, for instance, that you are setting. And even on your smartphone, for instance, you can change everything so that when you are standing in the factory and you see there's something that you can optimize, you easily can change that over the backend and then push the information out to all of the clients. Um, in general, when we started the talks, we thought it's only about wayfinding, but we've then seen, okay, there's a little bit much more to do, like tracking logistics, maintenance, inspection, monitoring. Um, and we also have seen that where we are coming from originally, mostly we always thought that um, normally it's about airport and shopping malls, but we've seen that, I guess it's the same like we hear everybody in all of the different talks today, industry is the one where we normally get started with these technologies because there's a lot of added value. Um, one that we have is that um, our competitors are normally um, beacon uh, providers. Um, since GPS is not working indoors, but the big advantage that we are having, I guess, and uh, which was also a no-go for Volkswagen, is that we don't use beacons and there is no additional radiation. So that's for security reasons, I guess, a very important issue. And um, that we can set up our client um, and our system running into their ecosystem so that everything is within their um, own hardware. And of course, the goal is not to make advertising like you have in an airport, but you have to show that you increase the efficiency, but this is what Oliver then will uh, tell you a little bit more in detail. Um, the interesting thing is that we have seen, as mentioned before, is um, you have the factory, you have the augmented reality recognition layer, and then you have the AR layer, so that's what you will see afterwards. Um, as mentioned at the beginning, we just thought we start with navigation um, for a Windows PC, but then we have seen there are use cases then for maintenance that you can use as an iPad, or you can use the same recognition just with a different kind of connection to any kind of external system to the inventory. So the interesting thing is coming from, you have a forklifter and you want to navigate him to optimize his process. We have seen that you can even do inventory, for instance, you look at something in the warehouse and you automatically get the status and the amount, uh, quantity, for instance, uh, of pieces which are in front of you. And you even can use the same recognition, for instance, for maintenance. So this is now where we said we started, we wanted to make an implementation and see how this works. And this is where I want to hand over to Oliver, which knows more about the details. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, like one year ago, we met uh, Insider Navigation. We did a little pilot uh, proof of concept in Pratislava at our factory site over there, and we saw it's working. Uh, so we asked our colleagues in our factory sites where they want to make a further step, where they want to do a real project in the real world. Um, so our colleagues in Zwickau and uh, Saxony in Germany uh, were like, hey, we want to do this. Um, they have a fully equipped uh, factory site over there, so there's a press shop, there's assembly line, um, body shop line. We have also a painting shop area. 
So it's a really fully equipped factory site, a really big one, 1.8 million square meters, including the open areas. So we have a lot of space over there. And we're losing some equipment objects, and um, our colleagues are really searching for them a long time. Manufacturers cars over there are Golf and some other ones. <laughs> Um, logistics is a really tough uh, business for us. It's not helping uh, to build our cars, it's the, one of the most important supplier processes inside our factory sites. Right now, uh, logistic routes for getting our metal sheets to the production line um, is done manually. That means that we have fixed routes, we have a big initial effort at the beginning, and we have a lot of maintenance work. Um, due to a permanent um, optimization process within our productions, the demands location are changing every day. Um, the driver for the, our logistic route uh, cars gets a paper-based layout with his fixed route. So this paper-based layout is really outdated uh, really fast and it's not really helping him find his way. And uh, cause of the demands of the production lines Usually, uh, their fixed routes include detours, and uh, it's not including blocked roads. So the um, logistic driver is driving a lot of um, additional way. Um, tomorrow, we want to change that. Um, we want to have an easy way of changing the demand locations for the production line or the 2D layout as the back end of the insider navigation solution helps us or supports us. We have a web-based application, so we are not um, going for um, a hardware solution or a software solution with a fixed for one specific uh, computer. And we have the possibility to uh, update our layouts of the factory sites automatically. So um, right now, a lot of effort is also done in updating the layout as well, and we can um, get two results of, out of one solution. And because all of the system is updated on a regular basis, we are able to um, create dynamic routes within our company. Um, one thing for the next steps is that it's available for a mobile devices. So right now I'm just running around with a big laptop inside my carrier, inside my backpack, which is not really good for me. Um, with our mobile devices like tablets, with our smartphones, and, uh, even for AR glasses, we are able to implement uh, insider navigation solution in, uh, into our IT infrastructure. And uh, for Volkswagen Group, we are a really big company. We have 120 factory sites all over the world, and we need it to as scalable as possible. So we need to get one solution for one factory site. We need one solution for the whole Volkswagen Group. Um, process benefits, we get rid of the manual process, obviously, and we can generate additional use cases. For example, we can 3D capturing all our factory sites. We can do a, um, up, we get an updated version of our factory sites and our CAD systems, and we can get started for the new Volkswagen Golf um, planning phase, for example, really early because we don't have to scan our virtual, uh, our real environment. And for the future, uh, we can maybe use, we are evaluating this one, um, this kind of technology to get our logistic cars even autonomous because this kind of technology helps us improve and um, gives us the possibility to give the cars eyes to the, uh, to the cars. Yeah. Uh, here's one, uh, one example from the technological Proof of concept in Bratislava and yeah. Clemens. I mean, we already wanted to show today the implementation <coughs> in Zwickau. Unfortunately, we are right now in the implementation. Uh, so hopefully at the AWE in the US, we already can show it. But what you are seeing here is already the base why we are now doing this uh, uh, project in, in Zwickau. Because we made a test in Bratislava first to see, does this really work in an industrial environment? And what you can see here is on the one hand side, you have an intuitive navigation. The red line shows the VTS, so the autonomous driving vehicles that you know 
where do you have to take care that you are not crossing a lane, for instance. We also try to see, does this also work for factory planning, since we can also show 3D content like here, for instance, which means when every time you're changing the process uh, of a production to a new car, you already can show all of the different production steps in 3D, walk through the factory and see, is there enough space? Are there some pillars maybe in an existing production phase, for instance? Um, and so easily can show where you are right now and how everything looks like. And um, apart from that, the good thing is also when you look down, you know exactly where you are, what's around you. And we also wanted to show, is it possible, for instance, to show um, the cat data that Oliver was talking about in AR. So for instance, only the red pipe is real, the rest is augmented reality. And so the idea behind it is, when we already have the CAD data and we can align the coordinate system of Volkswagen with our coordinate system, we can everywhere show the, uh, the plan of the factory, you see what is behind the wall. And so when you're changing something, for instance, you have to make here a door because you have to go through to a different production press, you know, okay, we have to take care because behind this wall there are different pipes. So maybe we take a, um, we take a different way to get from one door to the other. Yeah, and I guess ideas are there a lot after we, um, we already had a lot, lot of talks in Zwickau. As mentioned, we are right now in the implementation phase of the pro project, but there are already a lot of other requirements, I guess, that we got. Like um, when you're already driving around the factory and you know, for instance, where the forklift is, you could use RFID to do asset tracking because you know with RFID when you're driving through, you know a signal where some assets are, you know the position of the forklifter and then you can calculate back and register all of the assets where you're driving. So you can all the time have an automatic update of your assets. Um, or as Oliver said before, um, autonomous cars still have the problem, they need some kind of uh, positioning and what we can do is when we already implement this for manned vehicles, you of course could also use this for autonomous vehicles to tell them where they are and how they get from A to B. And um, the idea behind it, I guess, is when we can prove what we plan together with the colleagues from Zwickau that this works, um, that we hopefully can roll it out globally as well because I guess the big advantage is we don't need any kind of hardware so it's, uh, that you have to implement. So it's very easy to scale. You just uh, under brackets, of course, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's just in the production, have the right APIs that you can see that you build the uh, um, right use cases on top of it, right? Yeah. Perfect, we've been very quick. <laughs> we've just thought we have too many slides where we were speeding up. So if we've been too quick, I guess we still have two more minutes left for additional questions.